we live in an unstable world. Would you agree? We live in an unstable society even within our own country. I was praying a lot about what to talk about this morning and what to say, big events going on yesterday. I, I'm sure everybody has known. I'm not even going to try to mention it by what it is. I felt like we need a reminder this morning. I feel like God wants us to be reminded. If the events of yesterday were success, successful, would it have been the end of the world? If it were successful yesterday, we still haven't lost our king. We still haven't lost our Lord. We still haven't lost any of the promises that we have been hoping for, that we have been putting our faith in our entire lives. If the events of yesterday had been successful, there would have been some changes in our lives. But our hope should not have waned in any way, shape, or form. I want us to be reminded this morning of the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. We call those three chapters, 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. And he's giving a sermon to all the people and telling them how to live and telling them what to, to expect and how to be right with God and what they can expect from God. And, and he's talking to us here this morning. But there's another passage of Scripture that goes right alongside of it that I don't think any of us ever really put together with the words of David in the 23rd song. I'm not going there yet, Rick. I'm going to stay here in Matthew. I want to read this morning from Matthew, from the words of Jesus. In my Bible, they are red letters. When we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We named him Emmanuel. Why? What does that mean? God is with us. So really, literally, the words that are in red in my Bible aren't just words from what we know as Jesus. They're words straight from God. Do you agree? Okay, so these are the words of God to us this morning. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why? Do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And this is the key, right here this morning. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do you agree with that this morning? When I think about the events of our world and what's going on, and, and I don't know that next week, in the convention in Milwaukee, that they're not going to be successful. But I know this, my faith in God isn't gone. 
I know God's still in control of this country. I know God's still in control of this world. He's still in control of what's going on in my life, and He should be in control of what's going on in yours. And this morning, if instead of seeking all the things that the world has and worrying so much about the price of gas or the price of, of groceries, God knew what you needed then, and He knows what you need now, and He's going to provide for you just like He always has. He says... Listen, the birds don't do anything. They just fly around and make your cars all dirty, and you have to go get them washed. And he still feeds you. He still feeds them. He still takes care of them. Aren't you more important to God than birds? He created you in his own image. Aren't you more important than those? And why do you worry about having to have the finest clothes or how you look in public? When I was in fourth grade, we had PE class. I hated PE class. I don't know if you could tell by my structure, but I hate PE class. And my mom went to 3D. Anybody remember the store 3D? My mom went, to, she called it Danner's. I don't, the sign said 3D on the building. I kept trying to explain it to her. She bought these ugly green and yellow and red shoes for me to wear in PE because you had to have a special pair of shoes and so that's what she bought us I was always embarrassed going into PE and now I look back on that as an adult and I go I probably did that to my kids you know <laughs> what, what piece of clothing did I buy them that you know they went to school and went oh my goodness We can get caught up in the things of the world in such a way that it takes our faith away from God and we begin to say that the things of this world are more important than the things of God. And we forget that God is still in control, that God takes care of our needs each and every day of our life. And then we begin to worry about things. What are we going to do? If, heaven forbid, and I know I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of Trump country, I understand. What are we going to do if Biden wins again? You know what we're going to do? We're going to get up and we're going to go to work. And we're going to eat. And the world's not going to stop. It's not going to be the end of the world. The only one that gets to decide when the end of the world comes is God. And he says in this whole passage of Scripture, don't worry about it. I've got it. He wasn't shocked by the events of yesterday. He wasn't caught off guard. He's already got a plan in place to take care of us, even if something happens. And I don't know. Go to Psalms 23, Rick, would you? I don't know if you noticed the first two words on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd. It doesn't say the Joe Biden doesn't say the Donald Trump it doesn't say that it's a Republican Party or it's a Democratic Party it doesn't say that the House or the Senate or the Supreme Court it doesn't say any of those things is my shepherd not a one of them and no matter what they do or don't do it's not going to change that on the screen who's leading you in this world Who's guiding you in this world? How much faith are you putting in the things of the world versus the things of God? That's the question this morning, isn't it? Do the things of the world count more than the fact that God says it may not be the best, but I promise you, you won't die? You'll live forever with me. Does it mean more to us that God said he'll take care of us regardless of what goes on. Because I saw a lot of reactions last night on Facebook from a lot of my friends as if the world had just fallen apart. As if everything that ever mattered is now gone. And if we can't protect him, our lives are over. You might as well just kill yourself. That's the impression I people and if 
thought occurred to me. Are we putting more faith in that than we are in God? Do we think that if that falls apart, that God isn't going to remember us? Go on to the next verse, if you would, Rick, there in 23. No, no, just leave, it, leave it there for a second. The Lord is my shepherd. And then what's the next sentence say? I shall not be in want. The psalmist, David, knew what hiding out and running was. He knew what doing without was in his life. But he also understood that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Here's what I noticed over, the li over my lifetime. I I've never been a, a great money maker in this world. I've never comprised mounds and mounds of money. I've, I've never been to a point in my life where I never had to ask the question, how much is that? But I know this, when I had kids, my wife and I talk about this all the time, I brought home every week $227. That's what I brought home. I had three kids to feed. And you know what? Not a one of us stopped getting fat. Not a one of us. You know who was in charge of that back then? People we didn't want in office. We all never missed a meal. I didn't get to go everywhere I wanted to go. I didn't get to do everything I wanted to do. But I never one time ever thought, how am I going to eat tonight? How am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to take care of And you know what? Over the years, I've noticed, no matter who's in office, not a one of us in this building have prob probably ever had to ask the question, where is my next meal coming from? Or, I don't have another piece of clothing to put on. I don't have anything to wear. If God took care of me and my family back then when I made $227, and our economy is a whole lot worse than it was back then, and inflation is incredible, God will take care of my family now. And I promise you, when we leave here today, I'm not asking a question. I wonder where I'm going to get my next meal. I'm going to ask, where am I going to buy that thing? Because I'm hungry. That's what I'm going to ask. I shall not be in want because the Lord is my shepherd. Rick, let's go back to the Matthew. probably not as jovial today as I normally am but this hit me hard yesterday watching my friends think the world fell apart because they'd lost everything and I thought your eyes are in the wrong spot you're looking for your help where there's no help to be found you're expecting the world to provide for what you want when God is the one who decides who gets anything And it hurts me to know that one day, one day they're going to run out of answers. And that's how people end up giving permanent solutions to temporary problems. And they end up leaving the world early because they think there's no other answer. Why do you worry about your clothes? Why do you worry about your food? So what's the answer to it all for us? I read it this morning. I even pointed it out to you. Rick, if you go down there to, what is that, verse 33, 34? 33, I think. 33. That's the answer. Jesus says, don't worry, don't be anxious, don't think about those things, don't let those things control your life. Don't let those things control your decisions or make them for you. I've got the plan in place for your life. God knows what you need, and he's willing to give it to you. The question is, are you willing to turn your face to him, to things that maybe aren't tangible, 
that maybe you can't hold in your hand, that maybe you can't feel all the time? Are you willing to trust him when you can't see him? Seek first his kingdom. Not just his kingdom, but his righteousness. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And all of this stuff will be given to you. You become part of the family. You're adopted in. John says that how great is the love of God that he lavished on us, that we should be called the sons and daughters of God. As you dine at the king's table. And you don't worry about where your food is coming from or where your clothing is coming from. And you all understand that this world is temporal. He is eternal. Where are you putting your faith this morning? Is your faith in God? Is it in your next pair of Nikes? Maybe it's in the Cadillac that you want what's your faith in this morning is it in what other people think because people tend to run in crowds like a bunch of wolf pack running around and somebody gets excited and the whole pack gets excited and next thing you know stupid things happen right where's your faith do you care more about what the world thinks and what God promises us. That's your question this morning. Won't you stand with me, please? <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have a lot to be thankful for this morning. And Lord, we all have a lot of things going on in our lives. It just seems like every day Satan finds something new to throw at us. that points us away from you. Lord, yesterday was just another thing that Satan uses to scare people, to make us anxious, to make us worry. Lord, I just pray that you would just take all of that away this morning. That, Lord, you would help us to realize that it's not about who gets the most in this world. It's about having a greatest relationship with you that when we leave this world, we still live forever in your presence with you. Lord, this morning as we stand here, there's things going on in people's lives that makes them anxious makes them confused about the future about answers to where they'll be or where they won't be or where they'll go or how are they going to get through this or how they're going to be taken care of and Lord I just pray this morning that the words of the psalmist would echo in our in our lives this week as we live and we go about our business Lord may the words that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be in want come to mind frequently Lord, would you just shove it to the forefront of our being to help us and to allow us to show everyone else I'm not worried about what's going on because I know God's there. And I know God has a plan for all of us. Lord, help us to live in that plan. Help us to put our faith in you and your plans for our life. Lord, help us not to be anxious. Help us not to be scared. Help us not to have fear. Lord, help our faith to be stronger than it ever has. Lord, we love you this morning. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.